Well, I guess I may as well get started and uh, it won't be a big deal if people file in late because I'm starting with a bit of a refresher. Um, I'm Rob Flock. I'm on the Chrome Interactions team dealing with scrolling animations and input. And uh, you may have seen my lightning talk yesterday. Oh, I'm, well, I'm sure you probably saw it, but you may not remember it. But it's about scrolling to things other than text, like images, video, et cetera. Uh, and in working on this feature, we um, need to think carefully about the privacy concerns around this. But first, let's talk about a brief refresher. So today on text, you can scroll to a given text snippet just by specifying it in a uh, text fragment directive. And we are proposing augmenting this with um, CSS selectors. And if you install the, the linked extension, you can try out the one in the slides and see how it works. But essentially, you have a selector that matches a particular element and scrolls you to that element. So you follow one of those links, and it will scroll you to the target element on the page. Um, actually, it will scroll it to the top of the viewport, but minor details. <laughs> And if we zoom out a bit, so you've got this long document, and the scroll part is somewhere down the, the page. Um, so let's talk a little bit about frames. So you've got this frame somewhere on the page. Let's say near the top of the document. Maybe it's a, an ad frame or something like that. And for the most part, the frame sees the embedder as a black box. Uh, however, it does have access to some bits of information. And I'm going to jump straight to the most powerful one, which is Intersection Observer, where it can say, uh, basically, tell me when the frame is visible. And there's parameters on Intersection Observer to say at a margin so it can know when it's within a certain distance of the viewport or something like that. So what this means is if a frame or if a site wanted to do something to detect the presence of a targeted element, it could, from that page, present a link to the user. You know, For example, earn free money. That would link to some other site with a specific target in mind, scroll to that site. And then the embedded frame would be like, hey, am I visible? The browser says no. And it would know that the page must have immediately scrolled. So this is the essence of the security concern around scrolling to items. So uh, this was already a concern with scroll to text, but it becomes more of a concern the more power you add to the API. And so we wanted to talk about how can we limit the ability to observe this. And I think this falls into three general categories, but I'm going to have uh, open this up to discussion and let me know if there's other ideas. But um, in essence, you've got you know disabling the feature in the presence of cross-origin frames. Um, cross-origin resources are also technically an issue. So we we have lazy loaded images, and so you could imagine that if the site that you were going to had a lazy loaded image near the target position it would get conditionally loaded based on whether that had been the scroll target. But that can be somewhat augmented with um, the double keyed cache to make it so that it's harder to associate the action to the user. But anyways, uh, basically disabling the feature when you have cross origin frames would prevent you from observing anything. Uh, we could also not allow targeting potentially sensitive content. And what this means boiled down is reduce the power of the selector. Or we could try to find ways of not letting the cross-origin frames know that we have scrolled. So on the first point, I think it's pretty much a non-starter because 4% uh, of pages, if I've found the correct usage graph on the web, are using cross-origin frames. And having a feature that doesn't work on a large proportion of sites is going to make it difficult to track when you can use it and be able to use that as a developer. We could consider trying to limit the power of the selector. And we have actually done this to some extent in the scroll to image spec, where we have a simple set of rules that are allowed and only specific attributes. 
so that you can't select on potentially sensitive attributes that might contain information that we don't want you discovering. Um, but if there was no new targetable content, then there's no reason to have any new capability. And any new content that you can target is potential information that you're learning from using this feature. And the last would be to try not to leak the uh, scroll to cross-origin frames. And so roughly what this would be like is you would lie. You would pretend that you had not scrolled. And so when the frame asks, is it visible, the browser would just say yes. Um, this, I think, is the most promising. You're still enabling the feature. But it does raise some questions about, like, when do you acknowledge the scroll? What's going to break as a result of this? If you had, say, uh, images which were lazy loaded near the scroll target, would you not load them right away? Because that could potentially reveal information. Um, naively, you probably want to start giving away information about the scroll location once the user scrolls. But then that still might give away the fact that you've scrolled to that position because it's an immediate scroll away rather than, say, a slow scroll like a user would do. Um, or you could try to do something that you know is more clever about uh, hiding the scroll offset, or or maybe um, load pages in a different manner when they have a fragment URI, so that everything is considered visible instead of only part of the document. Um, so really, this. Presentation was not intended to present answers. It was intended to present the problem and open up for discussion. So I'd love to hear what if people have thoughts. And maybe I should just stop the presentation at this point so that we can all see each other. Um, <laughs> but like at a high level, I, I want to know, you know, what do people think of the security concerns? of the possible mitigations? Do you have ideas for other possible mitigations? Are there any problems which are similar to this that we could perhaps build on? Uh, Gene, do you? Yeah, so a couple clarifications, first of all. Um, one is, is that um, uh, the thing that evil.com is trying to find is whether or not you're an administrator on the site or things like that. Like any single bit can be leaked in this approach. Uh, one of the mitigations that you that I think we left out on this is that um, the user has like there's a navigation involved, so there's a user action that starts it. So it prevents the brute force attack of sending in three thousand queries uh, for the user to paste out word by word what his password is, that kind of thing. So um, that that's a that's another mitigation that's there. Um, but we still, I think, fundamentally have that minor nagging concern that we might leak that you know, Josie and Susie are friends on Facebook or, or something to that effect. Um, and, and a single bit uh, being tested is still a, uh, a concern. Is that accurate yeah. or am yes. I overstating that? That's completely accurate. It requires a user activation, a user activated gesture uh, navigation. So you can't just ask a, thousands of questions by doing thousands of synthetic navigations. But it does give you one bit of a yes or no question, or possibly, if you have multiple frames, more than one bit. It also requires that you have a frame embedded on the third-party site, which is difficult, right? Like, if, if you're in an ad rotation, once in a while, you might be embedded on the third-party site, but not always. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, uh, David? Yeah, so 4% of page loads with cross-origin frames is actually lower than I would have expected. Um, one thing I had considered in the past um, was like you really just want to add some timing noise. Uh, and so if you, if you in 4% of cases, have to, uh, like, might, you might see like a little pop-up that says, like, click here to scroll to like the image that you want it to go to. Um, that might be acceptable and like might not be the worst experience if, if it's only 4%. But that that is actually kind of surprising to me. 
Um, it's possible I've linked the wrong metric, but uh, sorry, let me just post it in the chat. I'd suggest the high level that 4% is not acceptable to Rob. If David thinks it's higher than 4%, that's also not going to be acceptable. So um, uh, it would be interesting to get the, uh, an accurate view of that number, but I don't think it's going to change the outcome of, of, of that particular um, conversation. Well, it's an interesting thought, though, because it does mean that like only on these pages would we have to take any mitigation. And it doesn't have to be showing an affordance to scroll to the item. It could be what I was suggesting about the browser lying about the scroll for some length of time to make it um, less fishable or you know less likely that the, the frame could determine that this had happened. Yeah, and you're also not breaking the experience, right? You're just at, adding a little bit of friction. So like if I click on an image in image search and I get presented with a page with like tens of thousands of pixels, I don't have to scroll through looking at every image to find the one I want. I would just click on the button. It's still helpful. Or I mean, in some of these cases, what if it just made a smooth scroll animation that sort of looked like the user was scrolling down? You don't have to do anything, but the page can't tell the difference between an instant scroll and the user scrolling down. Yeah, well, and for that matter, um, the the user doesn't even have to see the smooth scroll down. Like it can, we can have whatever UI affordance we want and pretend to do a smooth scroll down to the the page. Yeah, that's interesting. We had considered a smooth scroll before, uh, but the hypothesis was that smoothly scrolling while the page is loading was going to be really janky and kind of disorienting. Um, and also some of our secu security reviewers didn't actually think it would add that much value because like you can you can still tell immediately that you've left like scroll offset zero. Let's just make the scrolling not janky. That's a side conversation. So I don't know the conversation is. in the chat at the same time. Uh, Brian has some data about frames. Um, <laughs> On a related note, there is a conversation with UX folks to say maybe a scroll into view would actually tell the user, hey, there's stuff above this page or this location um, that you might want to scroll back to because the traditional you've navigated to a website lands you at the top of the page. Um, so that might be uh, uh, an interesting avenue to to approach it through too. Yeah, I didn't I didn't have my headphones when I was dropping things into the chat, but. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah, I was just saying that um, this is uh, HTTP Archive data set from March 20. Uh, so it's it's not that old. Um, I don't, unfortunately, have the ability to identify cross-origin in here. It might be in the Almanac, but I mean, this is a lot of sites. And at least we can tell that almost 60% of them include an iframe. And I would think that one of some of the more popular reasons for including an iframe involve a cross origin. Yeah, probably. Um, sorry, you should take the four percent with a grain of salt because I just looked up uh, a metric name that sounded right in the use stats. It may be much higher. <laughs> but I think what like. What we're coming around to is that we could defer the knowledge of the scroll. This would probably be OK. Um, the questions, like then the question is, what broken experiences might the user get if we start doing this? Um, or can we? Can we lie about the scroll position just to the cross origin frames and not the root site so that, uh, say, content visibility should show? Because that would just be <laughs> completely broken if your content visibility auto um, elements were not revealed. But it, it does seem kind of bad for us to release a feature and break another feature intentionally <laughs> at the same time and have a, have a um, yeah, uh, it, it, it seems like a cheat. Um, but I, I am very um, intrigued by uh, uh, David's suggestion that we 
uh, do an, um, an interstitial or something to, you know, inject that the user, hey, you want to go to this, it's further down the page, click here to scroll there. Probably not a terrible experience. And, and perhaps we only have to raise it in those four or 40% or 60% or whatever the number is. Um, might, might be worth investigating and finding what the real number is. Uh, but that might be an interesting approach to um, um, at least taking a first cut at this without introducing significant risk. Sorry, Tom's had his hand up for a while. Yeah, I was just thinking about it from the other side. Uh, maybe there's other APIs that expose this information, but why does Intersection Observer get, uh, you know, why why does evil.com in an iframe get to register an Intersection Observer and get notified across origins by default? Yeah, that was my question as well. Is, is that the case today? Yes. We should fix that. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that seems bad. Like. So the major use case for Intersection Observer uh, is like if you want to do ad impressions, um, there's there's other ones too, but basically you want to know when you've been shown on screen. Um, and in the yeah. past, before before Intersection Observer, people would do polling basically, uh, and that turned out to be really bad. Um, yeah, that, that's terrible as well. But uh, in the case where you know that you're embedding an iframe for the purpose of an ad that from a content delivery network that you trust, maybe granting them permission to to attach the observer instead of just letting them do it but by default. The, the case for intersection observer is it's designed for an ad that maybe doesn't trust where it's being embedded. It's sort of the inverse problem. They like uh if if, if uh versus I'm being embedded and then it's trying to like if it's embedding like lots and lots of ads and deny um and not actually showing them to the user just to get all the impressions for instance. Um, Intersection Observer is a good defense against that. Um, it lets you know there's a fraudulent scenario here. But uh, so it's it's sort of like we're talking about cases where evil is embedded, a bad eye frankly embedded in, in, in a, a good website, but there's the inverse of a, a bad website's embedded. Yeah, you can also tell in, in kind of a side channel, because we uh, I think we don't schedule frames in uh, in iframes that are off screen. Um, so, for example, is if you come on screen immediately you, and you you just keep raffing, and as soon as you get a couple of raps, you'll know that you're on screen. Um, so it's kind of like a side channel to a visibility observer like API. Yeah. yeah, I think that was part of the justification was that there are already a, a number of means by which you can tell when you're near the the viewport, and so it's um, it's not that hard to know, anyways. <laughs> But I think uh, I think lying about the answer to that might work for some of these use cases. Oh, well, not just lying about the answer to that, but also like all the effects of being off screen, like throttling the frame or something like that. Um, and that would give less signal there. Uh, I see a few raised hands. I don't know if there's a good view of raised hands. Yeah, oh, yes. there is. You can skip me. I think I was first, but you can skip me and come back to me. OK, um, Mike? Um, cool. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. Uh, I was just curious, like, so you can do like hash navigation, right? Or like the, the anchor ID, whatever that's called. Like, do we do any kind of restrictions on that from a third party frame? No, no. And the justification there is that the, like, you can only scroll to specifically labeled items on the page. Right. So it, well, or ob headers. Obviously less powerful, but maybe if there was like a, you know, like if WordPress always had this, you know, a predictable anchor for some. I don't yeah. Know. Okay. Thanks. And I believe that's just the ID attribute, which is also overloaded for styling and other things. So there's a good chance that there's a lot of those possible leaks as well. So it's. Yeah, it, it's really any anything that you load where you load uh, at, at a scroll offset. So even things like history scroll restoration, um, you might be able to tell where the user was scrolled to uh, after, like when they go back from your page, um, which it maybe is a little harder to come up with something useful you can find out there, but it's still a leak. Um, Benoit? 
Um, I think um, what I was wondering about is if you start lying about the scroll position and you start mitigating, like, could the page not just like use the method that's used to mitigate and just figure out that there's a high likelihood that like you 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 did get you, you did get a match and like let's say let's say it finds the scroll position starts at zero and let's say there's like a sudden jump after like user UI or after a delay they might be able to find that and then and then you say okay well like you get into this cat and mouse of like okay we're gonna do a smooth scroll well then like now the scroll was the scroll was too smooth too smooth and then you add some noise and then they do like statistical analysis and like like how do you avoid that cat and mouse game I think that that would be my why be afraid of that solution? Yeah, that is obviously tricky. Um, so yeah, I, I'd suggest in this case that um, uh, the conversation is currently trying to figure out if that mitigation is worth doing and and or or, or would be valuable, and then making it effective is is a secondary challenge that. Um, you're right. It, there's, there's um, like even for intersection observer, there's other hacks that they could be doing. So us just mitigating the intersection observer alone, um, we would have to consider all the other side channels that um, evil.com being embedded could could partake in. Um, so, so I, I sorry, the point's well taken, but I also um, I'm not I don't know if it's solvable. Like it. Well, it there are like you can reduce the fidelity of the intersection observer API to the point where you can't get that information. So, for example, uh, you could not uh, fire any intersections until the thing became fully visible again. At which point, every intersection would be a user gesture causing that update, right? So you wouldn't create a synthetic scroll away. You'd start with the thing invisible. But if the user was already scrolled to the top, they would have to scroll down and back up before you started getting intersection observations. That would perfectly protect the uh, and like discovering a synthetic scroll, but it also means that like you're getting less information from intersection observer. Probably we're slowing down that content because we also don't want them observing the fact that RAF is firing quickly and all sorts of uh, content degradations. Um, Brian, you said we could skip you. Did you have more? Yeah, it's really, really brief, so it's good yeah. to come back right now. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to make a mention that the HP Almanac is currently putting together its thing for the next edition, and um, you can just open an issue and like. I think this is an interesting metric, the one we were talking about about cross-origin iframes, that somebody who is doing the research can help us answer. So if you're interested in that. Yeah, um, and I think it was mentioned in the chat that the metric I cited is probably just accessing the cross-origin document. So I think it is going to be much higher than 4%. Um, but it's probably lower than 60. So yes. what is it? That's <laughs> what we need somebody to research. And that's the perfect place to do it, I think. Cool. Well, um, this is an early topic, and it was a good discussion. I think we have some ideas, uh, but I'll let everyone have a minute to get on to the so, next session. And so before we let everyone go, Rob, where can they look to find out what the answers are to all of this interesting <laughs> conversation or to follow up? Uh, I should have copied the URL, but the, the scroll yeah. to fragment GitHub repo. Um, I will briefly, yep, there we go, I got it. And it's in the slide deck uh, if, if you need to find it. Thank you for that cue. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, it was a really interesting session. I love the attacker video walkthrough um, animations. It was, it was very good to see exactly what was going on. Um, I always like to, you know, I, I was imagining them with, you know, twisty mustaches or something as they were doing this shtick. Didn't have the production quality of uh, Jeremy's website, <laughs> element.animate demo, but it was, you know, better than nothing. <laughs>
Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks.